Hello and welcome to this new Android development course. This is part one on how to make a photo editor for Android. So first we will open our Android Studio IDE. Then we will click on start a new Android Studio project. We will click on empty activity. Then we will click on next. And right now we will change the name of the application to photo editor, okay? Please make sure the select language is Java and the minimum API will be, in this case, um, we will use the minimum API 19, right? Okay, and we will click on finish, right? So now we will wait for the IDE to create our project. So what this application will able will be able to do? Well, basically, it will be able to um, get a photo for the gallery and then load that photo into a bitmap. And then where we have the photo loaded into the bitmap, we can start manipulating it like actually doing whatever the case we want to, to make with the photo, change the colors, maybe change like filters in other photo editors. We can rotate the image, we can turn it black and white, right? So basically we can do anything we want with the image, right? So as we wait for the project to be indexed, well, it's already done. So as you can see, the IDE has created for me a main activity.java file, which contains the main code of my activity, which is the main activity on our application, right? Okay. So we will start by focusing on the Android Studio and the Android manifest file. So we'll open our manifest folder and our manifest file. So please open it. And what we have to define here is that we want to use permissions. So we will use two permissions for this application. One of them will be to read external storage and the other one will be to write external storage because we want to read uh, images from it and we want to put them back to store them or save them into the back to gallery, right? So as you can see, there's sort of a warning right here, which is about Google search, which we don't really care about. So we will click on suppress warning, right? And now it's cleared. So to define a permission, we will do the following. We will open an element right here and we will type uses permission, right? Android name, as you can see, and we will say read external storage. Okay, so the IDE is out of completing this for me. If you start typing read external storage, then it will complete it for you, right? Okay, we ended the block as I'm doing and we will continue to the next permission. So uses permission will be write external storage. So write external storage, right? So now we have both permissions we need. And in this case, we will also want to require a feature, which means enable me not direct access, but kind of delegated access to a feature. In this case, we will access the camera feature. Since this won't be a camera app, but it will able, it'll, it will be able to tell the camera app that it's installed on the phone to take a photo and send it back to me, right? So to use, to define that feature, we're gonna type uses uh, feature, and then we're gonna type Android name, the name of the feature will be android.hardware.camera, right? Just lowercase camera, I think. Okay, let me check this. So basically what this feature will, will do is 
will tell the system that we want to get uh, photos for the camera even though this is not a camera application right so and now we're gonna say um, I don't know if the emulator in which I'll run will be capable of this but I used we will still do it so you can have that feature in your real devices right okay because but it's a very useful feature so that's how we access camera okay and right here we can uh, we will leave this as it is but we will set these here up uh, in the application tab will be to lar to have a large heap because we will be storing uh, bitmap data into our java heap right so we're gonna say large heap and we will set this to true okay so that's basically how we will set this and we will also um set down here on activity i mean after this main activity name we will set screen orientation and i'll set it to portrait because the application will work in portrait mode right so that's how we um basically set up our android manifest file right so that's it for the android manifest file and now we will switch to our um we will go to our layout file right okay so let's go to the layout file and actually what we will do right here under the rest folder will be to delete the the current file so we will right click on it and then we will go and click on delete make sure these two boxes are unchecked and press ok we wait for the file to be deleted sometimes it takes a while so now it's it has been deleted and we'll go to layout to the layout folder right click on it then we'll go to new and it will we will click on layout resource file okay as the name of this file we will we will use the previous name so name won't change so activity main right and as the root element we will change the current root element with linear layout right so make sure you have activity main and linear layout we won't touch everything now anything else and we will click on ok now that we have uh, clicked on ok we have created this new activity main xml file and we will switch to the text mode right here and as you can see here we have our layout in which we can start making the changes we want for our application right so how this will the application will work so it will start by asking if the user wants to read uh to load the photo from the storage so an already taken picture or he wants or he or she wants to take a photo right now so let's create that user interface so here we will create a linear layout the width of these will be much parent the height will be um much parent the id of these oops the id will be um main screen maybe or welcome screen i'll call it welcome screen okay and we will set this linear layout a gravity um parameters we'll set gravity and we'll set this to center right so it will look better and the orientation of the linear layout will be vertical right so this is basically our welcome screen inside this linear layout we will define how our welcome screen will look like okay so maybe we will start with a text view right here okay we're gonna start with a text view and the width of this text view will be much parent the height will be uh, maybe 800 dp okay and the gravity will be center what this will contain will be the title of our application right so the text 
will be the application title in this case um photo editor right so that will be the title of our application and since the so the default text size is very usually kind of small for us we will change the text size so you can say text size and set it to let's set it to 30 sp right which is a bit larger than the default one so to know if the changes took effect i will um run this on my emulator if you have an emulator on your computer you can also run it on it or if you have a real Android device uh, of API at least 19, you can also run the app on your real Android device, right? So right now I'm waiting for the emulator to be loaded. And what the app should, should do is basically the app should start, then it should call to the, um, it should show our activity main XML file and inside that, it should show the title of our application. So this is the emulator, as you can see, it's uh, starting right now. So it's kind of a real device running inside my computer, which is provided by Android Studio. So it's it's easier to test sometimes here. But again, if you have a real device, you can also test the application in your de in your real device. Depending on your machine, this may take longer or less time than mine. But well, we will wait a bit more and until the uh, emulator is loaded. And then we will be switching between the emulator and the IDE as you can see right now. So you can see right here that says phone is starting and it's about to be ready. Okay, so as you can see, this is how the phone looks like, the emulated environment of Android. And now the app is being compiled and being sent to the to the emulator device, right? So we will wait for the compilation ends. And let me check if, as you can see down here, we can check that the, that the project is being compiled. So the APK is being generated and then it's being sent to the emulator, right? So it says Gradle bit build finished so the first time takes a while as you can see but later it will be a lot faster and now it's installing as you can see okay it's launching activity which means install successful and now we can check our application and it says photo editor right so this is what we wrote actually this is the text view that we have right here so this is right here as you can see, it is not very black color, so we want to make it darker, you know, black color. So we want to change the text uh, color to black. So what, how we will do it? Well, pretty simply, actually. Right here, we only have to say text color, and we'll set this to number sign followed by 60 rows. And this is how we define the black color. And we can also, we have another option to define colors with maybe better. If we open the values folder here on the left side and then we open colors, the colors file, here, here we can define more colors. For example, in this case, we need a black color. So what we do is we say color name, we will call this black, okay? And the definition of this will be a number sign followed by six zeros, right? Oops. I. Okay, six zeros. So make sure you have six zeros. Then we go back to activity main XML, and instead of using six zeros right here, we will just type black, add color slash black, and now it knows that I'm referring to the black color I just created on the colors at XML file, right? So now if we run the application again on the emulator, we will hopefully see that we have a darker title color. So as you can see, now it's running and now it's eating, it is installing, so a lot faster than the previous time. So, and as you can see, now the text color of this text view is a lot darker, which we like, right? Okay, so maybe we don't want these bars that appear up here at the top because we want kind of a key for application, a cleaner look. 
So we want to hide these in the top uh, status bar. So how do we do it? Okay, we will go to values folder and we will open the styles.xml file. Okay, inside these, we will go inside this style up theme that was created by the IDE. And what we will do here, we will open a new item and we will set window no title and we will set the value of it to true, right? We will also set another value, it will be item um, full screen, window full screen, right? So window full screen and we'll set also this to true. So what these two lines are saying is that we don't want the title bar and we want it to be full screen, right? So if we go and run the app again, we will check how it looks now. Okay, so now here we have the application and those bars that previously were here, they are not here anymore. So as you can see, we only have our photo editor text view we created ourselves, which is awesome. So let's continue creating the UI of our application. So after we create this title, we want to make uh, create two buttons. One of them will will be about uh, load image from storage or take photo, right? So we're gonna go and say button, okay? And the width of this will be maybe a hundred dp, right? And the height, maybe will, yeah, a height will be, um, yeah, also a hundred dp. Okay, we'll, we can change this later if, you, if we feel that we need it, right? The text of this button will be um, load image or select image actually. So this text will have the following. So the select image, right? So we can also see how it looks like if we click on the preview uh, button, preview bar I'm clicking right here. And if we see, we can see how this will look like on the application. So as you can see, we have select image right there, which is kind of okay, right? So we can also create a new button down these that will be take photo, right? So the second button width we all, will also be 800 dp. So it will be basically the same as the first one. And the, and the height will also be 800 dp. And, but this time the text will be um, take photo. Okay, and as you can see here at the right, we have select image and take photo. So let me check if I can do this a bit larger. So as you can see, this is what we will look that what our app will look like. So if we want to add an extra space between these two, what we can do here, for example, if we go to the first select image, we can say margin bottom and we will set it to maybe 20 dp. And as you can see now, we have added some space between the two buttons right here. If we want to do the same with, between the uh, the title and the and the first button, we can also do that. So we go to the text view of the first one, and we'll also say margin bottom, and we'll set also maybe to twenty dp, right? We, if, if we want more more space, we can do it to thirty or whatever the case may be, right? So now let's run the application to see if it looks what we expect. So it's launching right now and here is the application. As you can see, if we click the buttons, nothing, nothing happened. It's because we haven't set up it yet, but it will do it later, right? So we have, this is the welcome screen of our application. It says photo editor and then we have select image or take photo, right? So we have those two options. So I think that will be basically it for our uh, main uh, welcome screen. Now we have to, to go and access these buttons from code, right? So let's do it. So to access them for code, okay, let me close this. We have to assign each of them with a ID, with an ID. So first, in the first uh, button, which is select image, I will say ID, and I will set this ID to select image button, right? And on the second one, I will set the ID to 
take a photo button. Okay, so now we have these two, and if we go back to our main activity.java file, right here we can actually access those buttons, right? So to access those buttons, we will do the following. Inside the onCreate method, we're going to type final button. And I will type, so don't forget to import the button class. So final button, and I will call these um, select photo. That was the name. Yeah, we can call it whatever we want, but I want to select image button, right? So select image button and I'll set these to find v by id and I'll tell it r that id dot select image button so basically what this is doing is that it is finding an element that has an this id right so we will do the same with the next button so I'm gonna say a final button um, take photo button okay and we will set these also to find view by id and this time will be r.id dot select oh no take photo button right so in this way this is how we can access the elements on our xml file directly on java okay so now we want to know when those buttons are being clicked to do that, we have to set both with a click listener, okay? So to have this more ordered, I will make some space here between these two. And below the select image button, I will type the following. So I'll say select image button that set on click listener. And inside this, I will say new on click listener we press enter to make the IDE generate these for us. Okay, so we have now our onclick method, which will be called when the button is pressed, right? So now we know when the button is pressed. And what we will do here, well, we will do that later. And we will also do the same for the take photo button, right? So we're gonna say final button and we will, oh no, 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 sorry, I'm wrong. I will say take photo button that set on click listener and I'll set this to new on click listener. And as you can see, now we have two click listeners and two buttons, right? So these will be used to perform some actions on the, on the activity, on the application, right? So if we want if we want to select image button, we want to tell the Android system that we actually want to select the image button. Okay? For that we have to have permissions. We have to have the read and write external storage permissions, right? So as you remember, we defined those permissions in the Android manifest.xml file. So but we have to do an extra step if we are running on Android 23, Android, Android version 22, which is actually Android 6.0 or Marshmallow. So Marshmallow and above, Marshmallow and later, we have to ask permissions at runtime. Well, that's a change in the policy of, of how Android works, but we will do it, don't worry. So first of all, what we will do is that we will um, we will check if the if the user has permissions. So we we will override the on resume method. So after the on create method, what we will do will be add override, and we will type protected void on resume. Okay, we will open this. And we will call super dot on resume. So we always have to call the super method. So let me scroll this a bit down right here. And we will have we will do some changes to this uh, structure in order for to make the application work in every Android version, right? So we will create an init method. 
right? So we will create an init method basically, right? So to create an init method, we will do the following. Off, uh, outside the underscore method, we will type private void init, okay? And we will open this method and we will put what we created on the under on the onCreate method, we will move that to the init method. Okay, so I cut this text and I paste that text on the init method. Okay, as you can see now I have these the uh, button listeners inside our init method. Now why do we do this? Well, because we only want to initialize these things if the user has granted permission. And if the user has not granted permission, we don't want to initialize this, right? So, okay, let's let's go again. So, the app starts with the onCreate method. As you can see, the first instruction here, it says set content view to URL R the layout that activity main, right? So this is how we kind of can see what's going on, right? After we do this, what we have to 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 do is we will here we will check if the um, if the device has a camera, and if the device has not a camera, then we will hide the the take photo button because it doesn't have a camera, right? So we don't have to show it. So to hide, to check if the device has a camera, we will do the following. So we will do and say if, and we will say mm, mm, negation. So we are checking if the device doesn't have, so we will start with a negation and we will type the name of our activity, which in this case is main activity. Okay, that this, which means the context, and we'll say get package manager, right? And we will call has system feature, okay? And the feature we want to be checking is the camera feature, so we're gonna say package manager dot feature. Uh, feature camera okay so this basically will check if the device has or doesn't have a camera feature okay and if it doesn't have a camera feature what we will do is we will hide the camera button right so to hide the camera button we will do the following we will say find view by id and we'll set it to r dot id dot take photo button and we'll set that to dot set visibility to gone okay so if we run the code so let's run the code to check how this behaves right so i'm running the application i'm compiling it and running it and as you can see, it didn't took an effect here because this emulator has a camera. Not a real one, but has an emulator camera that is provided by Google. So this is uh, shown. If you have a device that for some reason doesn't have a camera, I mean, this can maybe be the case of, of smart TVs, right? Because the smart TVs doesn't have, doesn't, don't have a camera. So, like in those devices, if you run this application in those devices or in any other device that doesn't have a camera, and uh, this uh, button right here, the take photo button will be hidden. Okay, will disappear because it doesn't have a camera, right? So we have done a couple of stuff. We learned how to set up a UI. We learned how to check for features. We learned how to create buttons and how to set and click listeners. In the next, um, tutorial we will learn how to manage actually the permissions we we specified in the Android manifest so we will check about this so we have already checked about the feature we have to still to check about permissions so that's it for this video I hope you enjoyed it 
and I see you in the next one. Bye.